Feminism Put on Trial All Rise Sosuave.com enters the courtroom with extravagant robes. Like an old man, he walks slowly to the judge's chair and sits. Everyone else sits after him. Sosuave.com puts on his glasses and says softly, What is the matter? The officer quickly walked over to Sosuave.com and handed him the papers. Squinting through his glasses, he examined the papers. Who represents the defense? A feminist stands. Note, she is fat and ugly with a poisonous personality, as most feminists have. You represent all women? I do. Sosuave.com reads from the sheet. You are accused of being Machiavellian rather than wise, calculating rather than smart, mimicking rather than confident, full of gestures rather than full of actions, a highwayman who changes personalities and clothes to steal man's egos, a mind-shaper who possesses no identity, no virtues, no morals, no truths, and is ultimately a barbaric, petty, childlike species who transforms all these vices into virtues under the hypnotic state called love. He looked up. How do you plead? Innocent. Now let us hear the argument. The representative of the men may begin. Pook jumped from his seat. Thank you, Your Honor. Many men are afflicted with the disease known as Nice Gaius Patheticus. Now the symptoms of such disease are awful. The afflicted male will sacrifice dead plants as tokens of affection, write bad poetry, will speak in a language of banquets, and act like a fool in every and all ways. Objection? Yeah, you would object, the feminist snorted. The matter is about women, not about men. No, so suave answered. Women affect men's behavior. Let us hear the argument. Pook smiled. I call my first witness the man with alligator skin when it comes to women. Forum commenter, Auntie Dump. Auntie Dump walks in and stands in the front. The officer rushes by and holds up a rather thick book. Place your hand on the Don Juan Bible. He did so. Do you swear above all to be a man, to speak the truth of everything woman, to live with no apology, to know what you want and how to get it, and to live to the fullest so through Don Juan? I do. Pook paced back and forth. Now, Auntie Dump, what would you suggest now to guys? That men should stop trying to figure out if women or any woman likes them. Men are not women. Take off the dress, guys. It is women that wonder if a guy likes them before anything happens. Men have somehow picked up this bad habit from women. Go on. The thought of whether she likes you should never cross your mind. It is not important before you ask for the number. The important thing is you wanting her. Always ask yourself, do I want this one? And the answer should be, Wow, boy, do I! That is all you need to know. Real men take what they want. Pook turned toward the jury, which had one of each twelve members plucked from the last twelve centuries to have a true verdict of history. As Auntie Dump is saying, men are beginning to think like women. Obviously, feminism has made a great change. Your witness. The feminist approached Auntie Dump with caution. Why are you such a male-guided, hard-nosed pig? But that is why you love me. Disgusted, she said, No more questions. As Auntie Dump left the stand, Pook set up charts. Members of the jury, in every age, no man would be afraid of a girl. Certainly he would not look at a woman as one looks at a trialing odyssey. Pook turned toward the jury. No, I have not gone berserk. I only agree with the D.C. sniper with one thing, he said. Oprah will cause the downfall of mankind. 
Hence it remains for us to acknowledge the weeds of Babylon emerging around this garden of men. Young people are caught up in imitations they do not know, do not wish to understand, but vainly beat their chest, proclaiming how free they are without realizing they are entering a prison that took prophets, the blood of martyrs, crusades on the battlefield, for us to emerge. A flight of vultures, of feminist harpies, are circling overhead to pick at man, as vultures picked at Prometheus. These feminists, both the female and male variety, believe they are highly progressive and well-advanced, yet they are centuries behind the times. Feminism came without warning and conquered men. It has created a generation of neurotic males. A male of this time may be one of them. Do you believe it is wrong to judge a woman by how she looks? Do you believe it is wrong to advance on a woman sexually with no verbal consent? Do you believe women have been discriminated because of their gender and that males intentionally put women down? Do you believe that in sex it is wrong to even consider to have your way with her and become and be the sensuous animal you've always dreamed? Do you believe women desire as a priority? Respect? If you believe in any of these things, even just a little, you have been affected by modern feminism. It is the virus that creates the effects known as nice Gaius patheticus. Women are judged on looks because you are judged on your looks, and women are much harsher about it. Feminists think a magazine picture tyrannizes young women. Forget my body. What about my mind, they say. But did you ever hear a woman say to the nice guy, Your mind is great, but I love your body. And every male is witness to the fact that women run towards testosteroneized males, i.e. jerks. Why do men fail with women? It is because they respect them. This great respect men find in women is nothing more than a lack of self-respect, a lack of confidence. Women's reflectory nature must have something to reflect. If there is no man, there can be no real male and thus any love. Pook pointed to a magazine. A recent Time magazine cover blared that men and women are biologically different. Time treated this as a great discovery, but didn't we all know this when we turned age three or four? Feminism cannot see any biological differences between the sexes from the neck up. The feminist interrupted. Is there a point to all this? Members of the jury notice her tidy suit. Men change their clothes to match their lifestyles and attitudes. Women change their lifestyles and attitudes to match their clothes. Put her in a hula dress and she will start hula dancing. But before she could object, Pook added, Anyone who has thought about women will find little to value in them. The increase of thought about them, the increase of negativity is subscribed to them. The root of nice guyism is thinking too much about them. The more action you engage in, the more likely you are to get the hot chicks. So Suave hammered the gavel and let the feminist call her witness. It was an average normal woman. The feminist's witness placed her hand on the feminine mystique, whose true name is actually the feminist mistake, when she was done, Pook asked her some questions. Many men ask, what is the purpose of feminism? After all, women have their votes, their careers, and their business suits. Normal movements shut down once achieving their goals. Thus, feminism is not a normal movement. Now let us question the women. The woman, representing all women, was in the stand. Pook walks around her slowly, tapping on the bright light overhead. Why did you become a feminist? Because I was everything else. I was a daughter. Then I became a woman. After that, I became a girlfriend. Then I became a wife and mother. I had been everything. I was bored. Being a feminist was it. Is there nothing higher? Pook makes his voice louder. 
So you admit the truth. I do, I do, I confess. Now we see the picture. Women sees herself in relation to society. Women are in a never-ending war between mind and body. The body says yes, while the mind, ever remembering the status of reputation, says no. Oh, if there was only something that could free women from this state. Yes. Something that could make whores respectable. Yes. And sluts sublime. Oh, yes to turn the abandonment of motherhood into fulfilling a woman's potential. Yes, yes, yes! To make nagging infinite, to let fat girls feel free to get fatter, and to give ugly girls a societal role. Oh, yes! She falls unconscious. That is the purpose of feminism, to let women do whatever they want with an air of morality, to turn feminine immorality into virtue. Thus the problem of feminism is not men, but women. The truth. Feminism is not declaring war on masculinity, but on femininity. Feminism is a political tower of Babylon to escape the truth of human nature. I'm in America, and I love foreign chicks. They are just so feminine. Here the chicks act masculine and get fat. They find it shameful to place their time and talents into their family and children, whereas it should be their greatest joy. I think it is a great honor, joy, privilege, and pleasure to be a man. Women can trump us as they can be a mother of men. There is much glory in masculinity and femininity, but feminists are against both. They attack masculinity and femininity as the former being the cause of oppressing and the latter as the effect of the oppressed. Feminists desire a dull, gray, androgynous world without the sparkling lightning and glow that sexuality brings. The result is androgyny, everywhere with both genders putting their priority on sex. Here, there, anywhere, all positions, with all certain arrangements of threesomes, foursomes, orgies, what have you. The reason why is because sex, something no law or political philosophy can touch, is the only thing that makes women feel like women and men feel like men. Everything else that revolved around it, the old-style dating, courtships, of suitors, of gentlemen, of class, of charm, has been politicized out of existence. Pook called forth a band of men. Oh, gentlemen, what is left for men to do that is male? Gadgets. Sex with women. Bodybuilding. Sex with women. Hunting. Sex with women. Video games. Sex with women. Beer. Sex with women. Maxim. What answers are these? Where there was once the concept of man as warrior, man as philosopher, man as many things. Manhood has been savagely attacked and brought down by the earthly beast who glitters with political maxims and whose crown is academic scholarship that is supposed to prove its glitter. In other words, the concept that masculinity and barbarism are one of the same is their new ruling scepter. As long as people believe in this idea, they will sit on that throne... This ties into the belief that women have always been poor victims of masculinity, enslaved by the evil of manhood. I am pro-sex, not in the way of libertines acting out of bestial episodes, but in the manner of sexuality. Some people here have said, Pook, why do you bring in things like literature and historic men into this site? What do these have to do with anything? They have everything to do with this site. For the majority of us are learning to embrace our sexuality, of both men and women. You can see sexuality as the key to the genius of Michelangelo's David, and the dazzling energy and insight of Shakespeare. You can see the matter of sexuality bring up the great men onto the historical stage. 
You can find sexuality as being the core to great art and a key to genius. But with sexuality removed, no wonder the great writings, art, and personalities of our time are non-existent. Now they are said to exist because of the politics behind them, but there is nothing great or time-defying in politics, so they will not last. I am not exaggerating. Look at college campuses. They are full of girls. Boys are failing more and more in school. Less and less men are marrying because they are on strike against the current climate. In sexuality, Atlas is shrugging. This website should not exist. We men should not have to inquire on mating practices. For what is more natural than that? Sosuave.com hit the gavel. Get to the point, Pook. It is proven that modern feminism has made men into apologizing neurotics. It has caused hell in the romantic union of the sexes. The virtue of feminism is to backstab men. So brute a part that feminism capitally plays that no man will be given any due achievement. But feminism has done its worst damage outside the romantic realm. The slow, cold rot of feminism has destroyed one male virtue after another until women cry out, Where have the men gone? Pook pointed to the statistics showing females dominating universities and increasing their numbers. Why is this? Because education has now become the process of degenderization. Before, education was to turn a boy into a man. Mathematics, philosophy, literature, and so on were all used as tools or guides for men against their fight with nature and time. These gentlemen had a style and class about them. They are extinct today. The feminist started to complain again, so Pook addressed the point. She says that society has always been toward patriarchy. In other words, men have been suppressing women down through the generations with their institutions and hierarchies. In order for women to free themselves, they must have political power. Thus, feminism is the poisoned fruit of Rousseau and classical teaching. Classical teaching, the echo of Romanism, holds that society is artificial. Society is a machine to be tampered and tweaked by the emperor. To these people, law creates society rather than society creating law. Rather than hold that society being the symphony of the rights of man, this classical teaching puts society to be moved and sculpted by the law. Pook takes out a scroll and reads, Rousseau is made to say, Whoever ventures to undertake the founding of a nation should feel himself capable of many things, of changing human nature, so to speak, of transforming each individual, who by himself is a perfect and separate whole, into a part of a greater whole, from which that individual somehow receives his life and his being, of changing the physical constitution of man in order to strengthen it, if it be true that a great prince is a rarity, what then is to be said of a great lawgiver? The first has only to follow the model that the other constructs. The latter is the artificer who invents the machine. The former is only the operator who turns it on and runs it. So what are people in all this? Why... They are merely the blocks and parts of the machine. No wonder feminists throw themselves at the legislative palace. Let me call another witness, Miss Wildfire. Miss Wildfire approached the stand. She put her hand on the Don Juan Bible as the officer said, Do you swear above all to be a man, to speak the truth of everything woman, to live with no apology, to know what you want and how to get it, and to live the fullest so through Don Juan? I do. Pook started to ask her about feminism until Wildfire broke out ranting against it. There isn't and has never been any patriarchy. That's a totally bogus concept. True, things were oppressive for women back in the day, but they were also oppressive for men. 
While women had fewer choices, men bore the lion's share of the responsibility. The right to vote came at a price, the price of potentially laying down your life to protect this country. That was the same price for owning land. There was not all the high-tech equipment that we have today to help with the majority of the work. It was much harder work, and men did almost all of it, and all of the most dangerous. In fairness to women, they didn't have the vacuum cleaners, electric washing machines, or microwave ovens, so they worked hard. These gender roles were required for survival. It was never some evil plot to hold women down. It was a necessity. Your witness. The feminist roared. Explain the wage gap, then. It's a farce. Feminists claim that women are only paid 74 cents for every dollar a man makes. This angers a lot of women. The figures themselves are correct, but they aren't presented truthfully. The numbers represent men and women as a whole, because there are stay-at-home moms, wives who only work part-time, and women who take time off to have babies. Men also work overtime and more of the dangerous and higher-paying jobs. It is against the law to pay a woman less than a man for the same job and qualifications, so anyone who believes this feminist lie is not very bright. And the glass ceiling? Yes, that proverbial glass ceiling. Feminists whine that there aren't enough women in corporate management. Hello, women have only been in the workforce, with more women working than not, for the last 20 years or so. Most corporate managers have put that much time in with the company before getting one of those jobs, unless he's a family member of the owner. It's about paying dues and earning those positions, and women will get there as soon as they pay those same dues and invest that same time. The feminist, defeated, said, No more questions. And Wildfire returned to her world. Now came the time for closing arguments. The jury of the twelve centuries listened inventively. The feminist ranted and raved. When she was done, Pook gave a calm and logical presentation outlining what was already discussed. Feminism is essentially about desexualization, this is where the nice guys and AFCs come from. This is why feminists are so bitter. But since sexuality is no longer embraced, male and female harmonics becomes disrupted. Androgynous people sport in sex, since that is the only way to make them feel male or female. Because of this desexualization, art, leadership, and education suffer. Pook brought out another woman, one he met in flesh and blood. She was in her thirties. She said, I don't believe in feminism. Women are the dominant sex. Men are so naive about relationships and sexuality. Men may be physically dominant, but women are emotionally dominant. Who controls the finances in most homes? It is the woman. Look in the banks and you'll find them filled with women. I could be a woman in any age but I would never wish to be a man in this age where manhood has been condemned. Members of the jury, consider the choice you are making. Of man or woman, this is the choice of humanity. Shall civilization be a mankind who seeks to go forever forward and gain independence of spirit from the gross natural calamities that compose the flesh? Or shall civilization sigh into a womankind that retreats back to infancy, to a warm, milk-flowing sleep? For the all, this raised empires and rots them within. For the one, this attracts respect or dishonor to make the life a series of avalanching regrets. For who would walk the path of a man and bear the thorns, traps, and trolls that nature's filled? of science, of philosophy, of art, for these are the stones of civilization. But how pure and blissful is the sleep that femininity dreams in, the dance and music of love's eternity, the wine, the song, the crest of love itself. The choice not taken is always the choice yearned for. But are there not two sexes? Has not nature divided humanity into two distinct parts? 
Then let us choose both. Let women be women, and let men be men. Let one hold up the scepter of reaction, and the rest embrace the man, that infinite name of action. The jury exited and made their decision. When they returned, Renaissance, Dark Ages, Middle Ages, Industrial Age, Pioneer Age, and so on, took their seats. It was the 20th century that announced the verdict. Guilty! SoSuave.com announced the punishment. Those who take feminism seriously will be condemned to bitterness, ugliness, and joylessness. Any males who listen will be condemned to loneliness stuffed with nice Gaius patheticus. There is a war against men, gentlemen, and feminism is leading the charge. Guilt-filled men sound like this. One of the reasons I started to care about radical feminism as much as I did was because it seemed to resolve for me a certain dilemma about myself in relation to other men. I had always felt irremediably different, even when no one else noticed. I knew I wasn't really one of them. When I first began to come in contact with the ideas of radical feminism, those ideas seemed to put to rest that certain trouble. Radical feminism helped me imagine a gender-just future, a notion of a possibility that men need not be brutish and loutish, that women need not be cutesy and coy. It was a vision that energized me. It helped me view the whole male supremacist structure of gender as a social construction, not as a final judgment on our natures, and not as a final judgment on mine. Radical feminism helped me honor in myself the differences that I felt between myself and other men. Radical feminism helped me know my connections to the lives of women with whom I had not imagined I would ever find a model for who I could be. And it's also true, and not easy to admit, that radical feminism helped provide me with a form in which to express my anger at other men, an anger that in men can run very deep, as many of us know. He is different from most guys because he refuses to be male. But he goes on. I think that for many men who have become anti-sexists over the past several years, their anti-sexism has meaning to them for similar reasons. In various ways, feminism has blown like a gust of fresh air through a lifetime spent agonizing and anguishing about the place of other men in our lives. For a few of us, feminism has helped us breathe a bit easier. Not so. By letting fat women get fatter, they choke on themselves. I see a couple of them riding those carts in grocery stores all the time. But it would be a mistake to suggest that a man's anti-sexism puts to rest his ambivalence toward other men. I think that an anti-sexist consciousness actually makes the conflict more acute. Such a man perceives even more clearly the behaviors and attitudes in other men that he rejects. And he understands more about what those behaviors and attitudes mean. In a sense, they are the behaviors and attitudes in himself that he wants to be rid of, and somehow other men can remind him of the parts of himself that have not changed very much at all. And whereas he briefly felt good about being different from other men, a part of him no longer feels quite different enough. So his anger at other men intensifies, as a means of keeping clear to himself that he's an exception. Meanwhile, he misses the company of other men, their ease, their companionship, the good feelings he remembers having had in their presence. For many men, the issue of other men is a classic conflict of approach and avoidance. For a man whose life increasingly has to do with anti-sexism, the conflict cuts to the bone. He struggles with what it means to be a man, and whether he feels ashamed or proud. This guy feels ashamed. He actually wrote a book called Refusal to Be a Man, which is what I'm quoting. So which is it, good reader? 
You must now make the choice. It all comes down to so suaves be a man or Oprah's be a man.